Hey YouTube, what's up? Cameron from Cameron's Fish Tanks giving you a video on my uh, reef. I'm going to be starting a new series called How to Get Rid of uh, Green Hair Algae Slash Cyanobacteria in Your Reef Tank. I currently have both and I think they're two of the most nuisance types of algae any reefer could get. Um, so yeah, here it goes. Uh, <clears throat> this is my 10 gallon nano reef. I set it up about three months ago, and I've been having this green hair algae problem slash cyanobacteria, which is also known as red slime algae problem, for about two months. Uh, it's really become a pain. Uh, it just doesn't look good to the eye. It's growing on the power head, on the protein skimmer, everywhere, on the sand bed, especially the red slime algae is growing on the sand bed. Green hair algae mainly on the rocks. Um, but yes, I'm going to go over how you can get rid of it. Uh, so first off, you're going to want to remove as much as you can. Just get in there with your hand, pick the stuff off. You're going to want to turn your pumps and filtration off um, when you're doing this. Uh, the red slime algae is going to be a pain to get rid of because it's usually found in the sand bed. Um, and it traps, in, traps the uh, nitrogen bubbles that your bacteria in the sand bed creates. Um, so you're going to you're going to want to remove it uh, pretty slowly so you don't cause an excess in uh, ammonia, nitrites, or nitrates. Uh, your fish won't mind it. Like when you're getting all the uh, green hair algae off, they might actually try to eat some of it. But uh, yeah, it'll just stress your fish out a very, very small amount. They won't really think much of it. Um, so yeah, uh, second, you're going to want to get yourself a cleanup crew. I currently have two uh, scarlet hermit crabs and three blue leg hermit crabs. I also have two turbo snails, which do a pretty good job of eating green hair algae. Uh, sorry about the quality of this video, guys. I have a really crappy camera. But, um, yeah, so get yourself a cleanup crew. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting emerald crabs, although they do do a fantastic job at eating green hair algae. Uh, they can become opportun opportunistic uh, feeders and pick at small fish if they're stressed out and they might actually eat them. They also walk all over corals which causes them to close up and uh, retract their polyps. So that might not be another reason you might not want to uh, get an emerald crab. You can also get a, uh, what are they called, uh, lawnmower blennies. Uh, those work very well, but I don't really like how they look, and uh, I'd rather have a hang on the back refugium, which I have now, and I'll get into that later. Um, third, you're going to want to get a, a good protein skimmer. I currently have an Aquatic Life 115 mini skimmer, which is a beast. You can see by the uh, collection cup there. Um, it works very well. You can see some of the green hair algae on it actually, and it's removing all that excess organic nutrients that's in your water. Uh, fourth, you're going to want to increase your water changes. Um, you might want to get a better salt mix. I'm currently using uh, some reef crystals down there, and that's uh, it's doing okay. It's not causing any uh, blooms in phosphates or nitrates. But if there was blooms, uh, the hair algae would pick it up for sure. Uh, fourth, you're going to want to get yourself a refugium. I currently have a hang on the back style refugium. This is a Phoenix HOB refugium. It was requested to me by Don't Be For Real. I'll put his link down in the uh, description. Um, I'm liking it so far. Uh, it's got two... Uh, Two sections for chemical filtration, which I'm currently running County Pure Elite, and one for the actual refugium where you can put your macroalgae in. I currently don't have any, but I'm going to go to my LFS in just a few moments here and pick some up. I'll film another uh, clip of this video uh, once I get there. Um, the only thing I don't like about this refugium is that it's an air pump, so it, uh, causes bubbles to rise in the intake down there and it causes the water to come up which is a pretty slow uh, flow rate. I also purchased with that uh, hang on the back of Fugium this uh, 
little Shibu pump. I'm not sure how you'd uh, attach it to uh, a little intake there. But, uh, yeah, if anyone knows how you'd uh, attach it, that'd be pretty good. Um, yeah, fifth, I think it's fifth, uh, you're going to want to get yourself uh, a light, which you probably already have, so you're going to want to reduce that lighting regimen. I currently have an Odyssey T5 high output light. Um, if you're running your Atinix for like 12 to 14 hours a day, you want to cut it down by at least 4 hours. Same thing with uh, daylights, cut them down by at least 4 hours. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to be back guys in a few seconds. I'm going to film another clip of this video on my LFS. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys soon. Later. Okay guys, here again, uh, just got back from my local LFS, sorry I couldn't film a uh, video in there, they wouldn't, uh, let me, and I think I know why, I'll get to that in a few moments, but, um, yeah, so, I asked for a small handful of some Catamorpha, which I spotted, um, and they gave me a pretty big handful, Catamorpha, and some other stuff, um, I just put it in. I didn't acclimate it or anything because I said I didn't have to uh, do that. But uh, I noticed I have the uh, Catamorph algae, but I also noticed this type of algae. It's uh, I really wish I had a better camera, but uh, it's kind of thicker than the Catamorph algae and it's a lot lighter. Um, the leaves are kind of spiky and uh, yeah. And the reason I don't think they allowed me to film. Uh, the little refugium that they had was because uh, they also had some uh, Calorpa right here. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, this stuff, uh, according to Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, is uh, illegal to export and import in California. And I live in California. But, uh,. I'm just going to keep it over in this section of the refugium because it can be uh, it can be a little bit invasive and uh, take over your tank. So I'm going to make sure I keep it on this side. Get some more of it, trying to get some off. But uh, yes, that's a long string Calorpa. And this is all Catamorpha. Um, I got a really good deal with this. They hooked me up. I, only, I got all of this for about five bucks and it's filling up the whole fuge. Um, so yeah, this is day one, guys. Um, you can see my awesome blue lake hermit crab down there. Looking beast, he's huge. Um, so hopefully I can get rid of this and all of this. Uh, I'm really, really sorry about the quality of this video, guys. Um, I'm gonna be getting a better camera soon, so. Uh, yeah, guys, uh, stay tuned for part two. Remember to like, uh, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And, uh, yeah, see you guys later. Peace.